Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonnet with Sonnet's Garden Blooms. I wanna thank you all for stopping by. Now in today's video, we are tackling five items that I recently thrifted and we are flipping them for the holidays. So I went into the hoard, I grabbed a few items that I've had for a while and a few that I just got. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and I can't wait to hear what you guys all think. For project one, I found this little crate at the Goodwill bins. I It caught my eye because I liked how they look little, like little doors on each side, like cupboard doors. And I envisioned some kind of mold or something like that on them right away when I saw it. Um, I had it in my stash and I broke it out and I'm like, you know what would be a perfect mold? The new IOD mold baubles. And I thought we could put a couple ornaments on each side. Uh, so what I did is I made all the molds right away. So I... There's four sides. I tried to get one bigger ornament on each side and then one smaller one. And I wanted them kind of staggered so that it wasn't like right next to each other. Uh, and I did that to all four sides. So um, one tip here is if I were to do this again, um, as I was doing this, I had flashbacks to when I did um, these two dressers. I was trying to do an anthropology dupe, and there's a video out there. Go check it out. Um, I actually had to eventually just lay the dresser flat on its back uh, just so that all the molds would dry and the glue would make them stick in place. So as I was doing this, initially I wasn't even thinking, I just made all the molds and um, I realized I probably should have did one side at a time. So create two molds, glue them on, let that glue dry, create two more molds, glue them on, let that side dry and so on. Um, I made all the molds, they actually started drying a little bit and the easiest way to get a really good, um, to get that glue and the whole mold to feel like it's exactly part of the project is when it's to it's just fresh out of um, the, the mold itself. Uh, so it just took a little bit. I really had to kind of press down. Um, I used a little bit of paint um, to fill in some, there's a, were a few little gaps. So I filled that all in with paint. Um, I still think it looked great, but that was just a little pro tip for you. So anytime you're gluing on molds, I do recommend Type Bonds Quick and Thick. It is it just the it, it it works perfect. I love it. Um, I just squirt on a little bit on the back. I take my finger. I rub uh, the glue all over. And the key here too is you want enough to the edges, but you don't want it to ooze. So you don't want too much glue uh, because when you lay it down and you actually press to secure it in place you don't want glue like oozing out is what I guess what I would recommend. Uh, so having too much glue is actually a bad thing uh, because then you're doing a lot of cleanup and there was like this one, it was very hard to determine how much glue I wanted. And so it did ooze out a little bit and I was having to clean up that long one. But if you have to, uh, it's not a big deal. I just took a really sharp knife and I kind of like um, scraped off any excess. Uh, again, I just make sure that it's all lined up nice and straight. I then press down in the center and then go around to the edges and make sure that I have a good, like it's really um, adhered to whatever project you're applying these to. So I let this dry overnight and now my vision, this is where it all changed. I decided to use White Swan by DIY and I applied two coats of White Swan to the entire project. I uh, Anytime um, you're using white, especially like on a dark wood like this, this is almost like a walnut, you definitely need two coats. Uh, so I apply it to the entire piece, including the molds. 
And once that all dries, then I'm going to come back and we are going to finish this off. So my vision here is initially I was just going to take a little bit of the gilding wax from DIY and I was just going to rub it over the ornaments and let those ornaments pop. In the end, I just decided, no, I really liked how that looked. So I am just going for it and I am going to just take my brush. I really went in to all the uh, crevices of each of the molds and then um, kind of like in that right where I'm uh, around the edges there like right there I went in and I just added the um, gilding wax to the entire piece after I was done then what I did was I went back with a piece of paper towel and I wiped off any of the excess and I really am loving how this is looking For project two, this is by far one of my favorites. I found these bottle trees at just like a local store. I took my wire cutters and I cut the bottle tree off of the base. And if you remember from my recent video, uh, my free thrift haul, I ended up getting those doorknobs from that haul uh, for free. And I knew right away uh, when I saw those, I was like, oh, I had, I couldn't remember where I had seen it, um, but somebody else had used glass ones and I thought it would be perfect to use the bottle trees in these. So initially I squirted uh, some of the hot glue inside of them and I did not realize that they're hollow. So the glue all went inside. So I had to pull the tree back out, add a little bit more glue. And by the third one, I was a pro at doing these. And the other pro tip here is you want to hold it in place until that hot glue dries. So it was kind of interesting. That whole metal um, handle actually got extremely warm because it filled the whole cavity up. You know how much I love my rolling pins, and I had these three. They were fairly new rolling pins. They had that little bit of a piece of plastic in each one. The one with red handles actually looks like it was from Menards, and at the time it was like a dollar. I couldn't read, but I think it said a dollar like 63 or something like that. So for starters, what I am doing is I am painting each one of the rolling pins white swan because we are going to come back and we are going to add some really pretty decoupage paper by Roy Cycled. 
and I'm doing that to each one of the rolling pins. I want to mention that I'm only doing one coat. The coverage was very good on these. Um, I didn't have any bleed through or anything like that. And uh, typically I do try to do two coats on white, but I, I did one coat and I let it dry very thoroughly. And then, like I said, we're coming back with the decoupage paper. So now that all three are dry, what I'm going to do next is I'm taking black velvet from DIY and I am going to paint each of the handles black. So I'm going to just do one coat of black velvet to each of the handles. I just got in red damask decoupage paper by Roy Cycled and it caught my eye right away when I was going to order it. I thought this reminds me of the holidays. So I it can be used for the holidays or not the holidays. Uh, so I really liked it on the rolling pins because these could be kept out year round. So I cut the piece to size for the rolling pin and I am using liquid patina and we are going to ap apply liquid patina to um, get the decoupage paper on here. So the, the real key here is just to apply a nice even layer to get things started and you want to work in um, you want to work in sections so just um, go ahead apply a nice even layer to the first area uh, lay down your decoupage paper smooth it out then apply a little bit more liquid patina uh, again smooth out more of the paper until it's completely finished so now that I've applied the paper to all three of the rolling pins, I am going to distress or wet distress the handles. I just want them to look a little aged and wet distressing is the easiest way to do it. I just take a damp rag and rub randomly all over each of the handles. I then wait until they're dry and then I apply a clear coat and I like using Big Top from DIY and then the uh, rolling pins are completely transformed. So for my fourth project, I did find these at the Goodwill bins. I actually ended up finding a huge stack of them. And this was inspired by my good friend, Kristen. She actually had some tins like this and she used the birds from the new transfer of IOD. I knew I wanted to paint them red, but then when I saw her little birds, I was very inspired to try something very similar. So first off, we are going to paint the lower half of these metal containers red, and we're gonna let them dry, and then we're gonna come back and we are going to add those beautiful little transfers well, before we can add the transfers, we do need to seal the DIY paint and I am using Big Top from DIY. I'm going to apply one even coat to all three. And the key here is just to make sure that it is completely dry before you apply your transfer. So I let them dry overnight and I want to show you these cute little birds. Oh my gosh, you guys, they are so adorable. So my vision here is I'm first going to lay out uh, the greenery and then once I lay the greenery out, then I'm going to attach the bird. And um, if you look at the little birds, they do have little feet. So I just want to make sure I'm positioning them where it looks like they're actually actually standing on the stem. 
Uh, if you haven't laid down a transfer before, it's super easy. Uh, what you need to do is just lay it down. And if you can see, this is a bit of like, I have some curved surfaces. So what I do is I start with one area and I just make sure that that transfer sticks gets in between in all the grooves. So the actual transfer actually gets right in the grooves with it and it works perfect. I absolutely love how this turns out. Now, after I looked at them, I realized I felt like it needed something. So I decided to add just a little bit of red right around the brim and then right inside. And I think that completely finishes the whole piece off. And if I hadn't mentioned before, I am using Marquee from DIY. And this is by far one of my favorite reds for the holidays. For my fifth and final project, I grabbed this out of my hoard. I've had it forever. Initially, I was going to plant it up with some plants outside, and then I saw it and I grabbed it for today's video. I right away thought this would be a perfect opportunity to use the Christmas Master Board from Roycycled, and that's what this piece of paper is. Look at how many projects you could possibly get out of this one piece of paper. So I initially cut the birds out of the paper and I set aside the rest of the paper for future projects. I lined it up to see what if it would actually fit and what I'm doing here is I'm taking water and a paintbrush and I am just trying to create a rugged edge. I don't want it to be completely square. I just want it to look very natural. So I just, like I said, just take a little bit of water on the paint brush and dab it on the decoupage paper then I take the area that's wet and I just pull and it just gives it a really fun uneven edge I think it looks perfect now to apply it I am using liquid patina from DIY and again just like I did with the rolling pins I start on one side I lay it down I make sure that all the wrinkles are out and I just continue to add some liquid patina underneath take my paintbrush and just again smooth it all out until it's completely on and then I let it dry and then I'm going to complete this project. So I did love it the way it was, but I wanted to add some greenery. So I'm just taking um, some green foam and initially I just hot glued it to the bottom. It did not stick amazing so I pulled it out I took off the hot glue I then added some quick and thick and hot glue to initially hold it in place the quick and thick will hold perfectly so I get this all in here and then I start adding my greenery so I had picked up a bunch of boughs uh, here and there uh, recently. I was at Walmart, Hobby Lobby, you name it. I've been trying to find a bunch of different greenery to add to different displays. And for this, I just start adding here and there. My ultimate goal is to make sure that you cannot see that green foam. And it's kind of nice because the, the very base of each of these um, smaller stems, they do have pine cones on it. So I end up adding four of those, one big one of all that white um, like fuzzy. And then I took another white fuzzy and 
and I end up cutting it all apart and I just add it here and there. And then we're gonna finish it off with a bow. So if you haven't made a bow, it is super simple. I squeeze it very tight on one end. I always leave a tail. I make a bow or make a loop and then I twist it and I make a neck, another loop, I twist it, I make another loop, I twist it, and then I make a final loop. And I am going to add just this tiny little bow to this piece and it's really going to make all those red berries in the picture of the bird's pop. So here I take the wire on the ribbon and I twist it. Um, there's two wires and I twist them to make them really sturdy and then I just stick it in the foam and I rearrange things just a little bit so that the bow fits and I try to make those little tails fall down in front. Um, initially I had one going back. I didn't like how it looked. Uh, the nice thing with greenery like this, with wires, uh, you can rearrange and make it just perfect uh, for your liking. So what did you guys think? What was your favorite item? Honestly, I have to tell you, uh, these were by far my favorite and they were like the simplest. I actually want to keep them for myself. Um, unfortunately, I will be putting these in my booth. Uh, they are just so absolutely adorable. So this weekend, I am headed north. I'm gonna winterize my cabin, get home Sunday um, very early, and I am gonna be stocking my booth. So Monday, I think I'm gonna bring you guys along while I do my very first flip for the holidays. So on Tuesday, the Yield Goat is going to be featuring my booth in their live. I have to have it looking top notch. So I'm gonna be working on it on Sunday. I'll be working on it on Monday and I'll be videotaping the entire time to show you how I'm gonna flip my booth. I'm gonna use the items that I uh, flipped in this video plus a whole lot more um, that I have been working on. So if you saw my live, I'm gonna have those red windows in there. Um, just all kinds of really great stuff. So. Um, the membership is closing as of today because I am heading up north tonight. I am giving you guys uh, until Sunday. If you are interested and want to sign up for my membership group, uh, you can still do that. Definitely reach out. Uh, my email is info at sonnetsgardenblooms.com. I will have some information in the description. So if you need more information, I can also shoot you over an email. I will have a little bit of a spotty service on Friday night and Saturday, but I'll get back to you guys Sunday and we'll have plenty of time. Um, I wanna get the membership rolling uh, as of next week. Um, we already have quite a few new faces in the membership. Super excited about it. Uh, so anyways, you guys have yourselves a wonderful weekend and we will see you Monday. Bye.